Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. Come, Holy Spirit, come now, come as you wish. I was hesitating which uh, homily to put today, but I prefer today to make some kind of sermon as a, a preparation uh, for our uh, event which is coming on, on Friday, the confirmation with Bishop Nunan. It's very uh, wise for us to understand what the sacrament of confirmation is and also ask on this occasion to revive all the fruits of the gifts which are coming to us through the sacrament of confirmation. The sacrament of confirmation belongs to the sacraments of Christian initiation. It should be received. These uh, three sacraments, baptism, Eucharist and confirmation, together they constitute the sacraments of Christian initiation. So if one of them is missing without baptism, you cannot receive the others. If there is missing Eucharist or, confirm or confirmation, you are somehow not completely initiated into the Christianity. Confirmation is necessary for the completion of baptismal uh, grace, so it's not optional at all. By the sacrament of confirmation, the baptized are more perfectly bound to the church and are also enriched with a special strength of the Holy Spirit, preparing us for the task which God prefigured uh, to us and uh, came to us in this way that we can uh, fulfill his dream for our uh, life and it's necessary uh, to receive it. In the rite of uh, confirmation, it is fitting to consider the sign of anointing and what it signifies and implies. It signifies a spiritual seal. You know, seal could be broken, but seal cannot be undone. Even in the modern way, you can distort it. It's something very similar like conception. You cannot be conceived again. When the life is one conceived, you can reject the life, destroy life, but you cannot undo this what happened on the conception. So with the spiritual gifts, it's uh, very much in this way that we uh, are sealed and, and it's done. So the seal of the Holy Spirit marks our total belonging to Christ and also our enrollment in his service forever. This could be a bit uh, frightening that we belong forever, that is like taking our freedom away. But try to remember also that this uh, promise marks the promise of divine protection in the great eschatological trial. In some Middle Ages they were explaining in this that the king is sending his army, his favorite general, to win some kind of war or battle and he's obliged to support his army, his general, if he's in trouble. So it's not only one side service, the king is also obliged to support, to provide everything what is needed for our salvation. So the liturgy of confirmation begins with the renewal of the baptismal promises by the confirmandi. Confirmandi is our candidates for confirmation. This clearly shows that confirmation follows baptism. You cannot receive any other sacrament unless you are baptized. That's a precondition. The bishop extends his hands over the whole group uh, of the confirmandi. And this is the ancient time. This is the sign from the very beginning of church that is outstretching, the gesture of outstretching hands signifies the gift of the Holy Spirit, transferring the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then afterwards, the bishop is also praying. He invokes the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this uh, words. He will say it on Friday. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit you freed your sons and daughter from sin and gave them new life. And then he's mentioning all the gifts which they will receive. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of judgment and courage, so there are four of them, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of reverence, fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence, and he asks this as usual through Christ eh, our eh, Lord. So the essential rite of the sacrament follows. The sacrament of confirmation is conferred 
through the anointing with chrism oil on the forehead. It's exactly the same oil blessed by the bishop in the cathedral and then used in our parish for the sacrament of baptism and the same oil bishop is using later uh, to proceed uh, with the uh, sacrament of confirmation, the fullness of the uh, Holy Spirit, which is uh, done by the lying on the of the hand and through the words, the bishop sets for the names, the, the confirmant is choosing the name, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. These names uh, for confirmation are usually taken from the saints and usually someone who is somehow dear to you, some kind of example, some kind of motivation, some kind of challenge. I remember just there was confirmation in St. Joseph Parish and there was almost whole church crying. Because Bishop was saying his homily very shortly, but then when he had hundred or something like this people for confirmation, he was asking each one of them about their patron saint, the one whom they, whom they have um, chosen uh, for the uh, confirmation, to be inspiration, to be their protector, to be their, their friend, their, their helper. And I think there was the last uh, uh, teenager coming there. It was written on his chest that his patron saint is Peregrinus. So Bishop expected, you know, he doesn't know who this Peregrinus was. You know, it's some strange name, Latin name from ancient world. And Peregrinus it was one of these uh, people dedicated to care of the sick, especially dying. So Bishop asked him, why have you chosen this particular saint? And he said, just a few months ago, I buried my father. You know, and my mother is with cancer and she's dying now. And I needed some saint to help me, to protect me, to encourage me, to give the strength. You know, and then Bishop lost his voice and the people started to cry because it was very valid and very wise choice who will be my patron saint. There was just very drastic need of some kind of support of survive this tragic situation uh, in faith, and there was a support of the church. Don't worry, there was a saint uh, who, who can help you. The sign of peace that concludes the rite of the sacrament signifies and demonstrates ecclesial communion. Ecclesial, ecclesia is church, church community, with the bishop and with all and the faithful. That's why the bishop says at the end of the sacrament, the Lord be with you. So what are the effects of uh, confirmation? Oh, they are very pleasant for us if we take them seriously. The effect of sacraments of confirmation is a special outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's somehow like it, it happened with the apostles on the very day of the Pentecost. There are several other of these events mentioned when people respond with faith, with trust to God, that in some visible way the Holy Spirit descended on them. So confirmation brings an increase and deepening of baptismal graces. It roots us more deeply in the divine filiation, which makes us cry, Abba, Father, Abba, Daddy. That's what we are entitled uh, to, to do, call our Heavenly Father, Daddy. And it unites us more firmly to Christ. It also increases the gift of the Holy Spirit in us. The first gifts we receive, we have received already at the sacrament of baptism, but it's a fullness of the gifts which are possible to receive in this world from the Holy Spirit. And it renders our bond with the church more perfectly, that we see the church as the body of Christ, and we start not only to love God, but also to love the church. It gives us a special strength of the Holy Spirit, to spread and defend the faith by word and action as true witnesses of Christ. You, you can do it on your own, but it's much more efficient if you are inspired, supported by the Holy Spirit. Because it's not only to prove your point, but it's also to influence the other person. And this you don't know on what the person will react. That's why praying to the Holy Spirit, asking the assistance of the Holy Spirit, it helps us. Uh, to be uh, in the right position. It, it helps also the special strength to confess the name of Christ boldly, that you will be not afraid to uh, acknowledge uh, Christ and never to be ashamed of the cross 
because through the cross of Christ came our uh, salvation. So that's why it's so important. Confirmation is given only once, as the seal is done once, confirmation is only once for it. It prints on the soul an indelible spiritual mark, the character, which is the sign that Jesus Christ has marked a Christian with the seal of the of his Holy Spirit. So it's a gift. The giver of the Spirit is Jesus. So it's very uh, correct when Jesus uh, told uh, the apostle, is profitable for you that I go, because if I don't go, you will not receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So who can receive this sacrament? Every baptized person, not yet confirmed, can and should receive the sacrament of confirmation. We have so six grown-up people who will receive the sacrament of confirmation together with our teenagers when, when bishops uh, comes uh, to us. So baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist form the unity. As I mentioned at the beginning, the Christian initiation. It should be performed even in extraordinary situation. Without confirmation and Eucharist, Baptism is certainly valid, and Baptism is certainly efficacious for our salvation. But Christian initiation remains incomplete. It's like something missing, like something not finished. Confirmation is sometimes called the sacrament of Christian maturity. That's why in our church, in our Western church, Latin church, we have this tradition waiting for the teenagers being around 14, 15 years of age, that they can choose Jesus themselves. On the day of baptism, their parents and their godparents, they promised on behalf of the baby that they will practice their faith. And the parents and godparents, they are doing usually their best to educate the child, to introduce the child to practice faith. And on this day of confirmation, I choose Christ as I was chosen. So the age of body does not really determine the age of the soul. Sometimes you have very immature old people and extremely mature young person. Even in childhood, one can attain spiritual maturity. If you go to the Old Testament, the Book of Wisdom, it says, for old age is not honored will for length of time or measured by number of years. It's measured by this internal wisdom, which is a gift of God. Preparation for confirmation should aim at leading the Christian toward a more intimate union with Christ. That's the whole purpose, to come closer to Jesus and more lively familiarity with the Holy Spirit. So pray the prayer of the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit's actions, gifts, and biddings were much more efficient, were more capable of assuming the apostolic responsibility of Christian life. What, what is missing in us, the Holy Spirit is providing as soon as we ask for his uh, assistance. Catechism for confirmation should strive to awaken a sense of belonging, we belong uh, to the universal church of Jesus Christ, universal as a Catholic church, and we also belong to the parish community. And through this belonging, we belong, first of all, uh, to God. To receive confirmation, one must be in a state of grace. I think this should be quite clear. Any sacrament you receive, you should be in the state of grace. One should receive the sacrament of penance in order to be cleansed for the gift of the Holy Spirit like to empty your heart from uh, vain things, to make room uh, for these gifts which the Holy Spirit will bring on the day of confirmation and then refresh us for the rest of our life. More intense prayer should prepare one to receive the Spirit with docility and readiness uh, to act. I was so much advertising and encouraging our young people come to some kind of familiarity with the Holy Spirit, that it would be your daily prayer of the Holy Spirit that you prepare yourself for this solemn day of the sacrament of confirmation. But you can also support them, especially if you are members of the family, if you are from the cycle of friends, or just uh, sympathizing with these young people who, who need uh, support. You can pray on behalf of them. Your prayer will uh, make them able 
to open more sincerely and more uh, deep to the gifts of the uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, candidates for confirmation, as for Baptists, fittingly seek the spiritual help of a sponsor. The Catechism of the uh, Catholic Church is uh, suggesting to emphasize the unity of these two sacraments. It is appropriate that this be one of the baptismal godparents, only if possible. Sometimes the godparents are far away or they are not able to come for this uh, ceremony, so it could be any other confirmed uh, Christian. But if you have this option to choose your godparent uh, for the sacramental confirmation, this, according to the Catechist, is the most appropriate uh, person. If a Christian is in danger of death, any priest can give her or him confirmation. In fact, this was my long-time mistake in Africa when I would call to the dying person. Majority of these cases are the old people, mature people, adults. The first question, if, you, if I don't know the person, is the person baptized? You, you cannot receive the next sacrament if you are not baptized. So even if the person is dying and is no time for any preparation, there is all kind of indulgences, all kind of privileges for the person actually dying, even at that moment could be validly baptized. And many people, when they recall the priest, they, they were already baptized. But the second question should be, is the person confirmed? Because this uh, initiation sacrament is not really finished if the person is not confirmed. And usually in my back, which I'm going uh, to see people in hospital or at, at homes, I have this oil of chrism. It's very seldom used, but it's there. You know, and I'm entitled, and there in the book there is a formula uh, for the sacrament of confirmation. So if you know that the person was not confirmed, tell the priest. Any priest can confirm the dying uh, person uh, before gone, just giving all kinds of advantages from this, from this earth. When in danger of death, children should be confirmed, even if they have not yet attained the age of discretion. So even if there are small children, that will be also very seldom uh, happening. But if it's uh, unavoidable, you see that you cannot help uh, anymore, uh, so it should be done. Indeed, the Church desires that none of her children, even the youngest, should depart with this world without having been perfected by the Holy Spirit with the gift of Christ's fullness. So this is advantage for us if we are equipped in this gift of the Holy Spirit in the transition from this earth uh, to the next. And the last thing, the minister of the confirmation. You know that the original minister is uh, the bishop. It's like we have the Eucharistic minister. The ordinary minister for Eucharist is the priest. Extraordinary ministers are the lay people who, for the functionality of Mass, they are invited uh, to help. So that's why we have invited Bishop Nunan. He was last time in our parish four years ago. So uh, bishops are the successors of the apostles. And this is my plea to you that you will come uh, for this celebration because if some celebrity from Hollywood would come, you know, there will be plenty of people to see, you know. Now, Bishop is something more important because he is the successor of the apostles. It's not just some person. Don't see just the, his face, but see the office which he is uh, carrying because uh, he's going to one of the apostles to, to, the, to the ancient time uh, 2,000 years ago. So that's why it's so important person. is very suitable if we show in good number in our church. They have received the fullness of the sacrament of the holy orders. I have just only part as a priest. They can have even less. The administration of this sacrament by them demonstrates clearly that its effect is to unite those who receive it more closely to the church, to the origin of the uh, church. It also demonstrates the apostolic origin of the church, this apostolic succession, and the church's mission of bearing witness uh, to, to Christ. And that's why uh, the bishops uh, present it so precious at this time. So the celebration of confirmation during the, is, will be during the Eucharist, so we will have Mass, and this helps us to underline the unity of the sacraments of Christian initiation. So 
feel to be invited. Uh, on this uh, occasion, Bishop will also bless our altar and our ambo, which were never blessed by Bishop Jarwak. So Bishop agreed to do it. He will gladly uh, do it. So to witness this celebration, feel being invited and support our teenagers that this would be powerful experience uh, for them and enrichment for their future life.